any companies on the above list that you guys like in particular that you want to highlight or maybe aren't on the list? Like, I'm sure, Tyler, you... I'll, well, I'll <laughs> Taylor started off. Um, it doesn't even have to be on the list. Oh, yeah, on the dividend aristocrat list, I, I'm personally not going to invest in any of those companies. Um, dividend payers in the energy sector that I like. I mean, the ones that I own, Halliburton, I'm not trying to talk with my game, but I own it because I like it. So that's one of my favorite dividend pairs. And they're, of course, integrated. Well, huge they're, exposure to. Yeah, so they have, the they're the equipment and services provider, offshore, onshore, uh, natural gas, oil, predominantly fracking. Uh, so once that picks up, and it hasn't even started to pick up really around the world. So I'm expecting that to be a nice decade or so tailwind um, once China and Argentina and others get on board with fracking because it's going to have to happen at some point. Cool. Well, since I do own ExxonMobil, I guess I'll have to say that one since it is on the dividend aristocrat kind of sort of level. Uh, the reason that I do like ExxonMobil um, over the long term is when compared to many of its peers, uh, when they're building out their projections on how to you know develop new fields they have a much more conservative approach in terms of at this certain price point we have to have at least break even or a certain amount of return and for exxon mobile that's about 55 dollars compared to 60 70 range for most of its integrated major peers um for it, it has the reputation for years now decades even of being the, the one company that f invests through the cycle so, you know, it's not trying to push a whole bunch of projects out the door when cash flows are great and then, you know, shutting down when things get, get weak. And it, it gives them that level of consistency that I think most investors are looking for when they're looking for that income sort of play.